Ah yes, paleontology. It unravels Earth's lost 4.6 billion year old history. From its formation, all the way to the modern day. As you fans may know, I'm a big fan of this subject, and I made something special about it. I present you. My paleontology iceberg. Let's dive in. Tyrannosaurus. I probably shouldn't explain here because most of you know everything about it, but for those who don't, it was a theropod from the late Cretaceous of Western North America. It would have grown to 13 meters and 9 tons. Due to its fame it has been featured in many media. Feathered Dinosaurs. Feathers in non-avian dinosaurs range from simple hair-like feathers to very bad-like ones. These are most notable on a theropod group called Coelurosauria, which includes Tyrannosaurus, Velociraptor, and many others. However, similar integument do appear in other dinosaurs outside of the clade, like the Spanish Allosauroid Concavenator and the Russian Chilindrodromius, an ornithischian. Feathers really do show a transition between non-avian dinosaurs and birds. Mass extinctions. These are global. Rapid decreases in biodiversity, that can make lots of species go extinct. An example of this is the famous Cretaceous Paleogene extinction that killed off the non-avian dinosaurs and other animals. A mass extinction is often caused by a change in the Earth's geography or a natural disaster. Media. Basically random paleomedia. Movies like Jurassic Park. Documentaries like Dinosaur Planet, educational books about prehistoric life, you get it. Paleozoic. The first era of our current EON. This began far before the dinosaurs, 541 million years ago to be exact, with the Cambrian explosion. This era is home to lots of key moments in life's history, like the first land animals, the evolution of the jaws, and more. The era ended 252 million years ago with a terrifying extinction dubbed, the Great Dying, among the worst mass extinctions in Earth's history. Mesozoic. After the Paleozoic came the Mesozoic, which heralded the reign of the reptiles. Because of this, it's also often called the Age of the Dinosaurs. This famous era lasted for some 186 million years until an asteroid hit what is now the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, causing a mass extinction killing many of the ruling reptiles, including the non-avian dinosaurs. Cenozoic. The last era in Earth's history, this is when the mammals began to fill the niches the non-avian dinosaurs had. With this, they gave rise to many familiar groups, including those with modern species, from the tiniest shrew to the largest whale. This era still continues today. Papo Tyrannosaurus. You probably have seen this model already. Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? But for some reason, it's used nearly everywhere in dinosaur themed stuff like movies, books, clothing, even in Jurassic World's concept art. I don't understand why it's so overused, maybe time will tell. Anyways let's dive down to the next layer. Dinosaur Milanosums. Believe it or not, coloration has been found in some non-avian dinosaurs, using fossilized Milanosums. These Milanosums lead us to believe that dinosaurs weren't just brown or green reptiles but also with colors very similar to today's birds. Microraptor was iridescent black, Cynoceropteryx was brown with white stripes on its tail, Borolapelta was reddish brown, and Chianis was black with red on its head, and more. Let's hope we'll find more Milanosums in dinosaurs to crack out their true colors. Walking with Dinosaurs Liopleridon Walking with Dinosaurs is a 1999 documentary miniseries from the BBC that explores the world of the Mesozoic through six episodes, from the late Triassic to the end of the Cretaceous. Though this was such a success, there are some inaccuracies. 
Among the most infamous is the size of its Liar Pluridon from the third episode. It is depicted being 25 meters and 150 tons, almost the size of a blue whale, when in fact they barely reached over 7 meters and 2 tons. This huge size was inspired by fragmentary remains of other pliosaurs, like the monster of Eremberry from Mexico, which was once thought to be a 15 meter juvenile Liopleridon. I'll talk more about that later as we dive deeper. I also want to mention that Liopleridon is one of my favorite extinct animals, even if it's now thought to be around 7 meters. Nanotyrannus. This dinosaur was once thought to be a second Tyrannosaur from the Hell Creek formation in the US that coexisted with the larger T-Rex, but now though it's mostly thought to be a juvenile T-Rex itself. It was once thought to be another Tyrannosaur called Gorgosaurus. It was then re-described as a new Tyrannosaur genus in 1988, named Nanotyrannus lancensis. In 1999 though, an analysis by Thomas Carr suggested it was a juvenile Tyrannosaurus leading many other paleontologists to think it was as well. Mummified Pleistocene Megafauna. On occasion, animals from the Pleistocene Epoch, or more popularly the last ice age, have been found so preserved that their flesh, organs, and even DNA are still intact, even in thousands of years. With these, this led scientists to resurrect these extinct animals someday. Living fossils don't exist. Well, kinda. Anyways. A living fossil is a term used to describe a species that has remained almost unchanged for millions of years. Animals like tuataras, horseshoe crabs and goblin sharks often fall into this group. However, many other animals have remained unchanged for millions of years too. For example, Komodo dragons have existed for about 4 million years, and the earliest relatives of humans appeared almost 3 million years ago. This literally makes lots of other animals actually living fossils, while not usually being described as them. Build a dinosaur project. This is an idea by paleontologist Jack Horner to recreate a dinosaur. Rather than extracting dinosaur DNA from mosquitoes fossilized in amber, a chicken or even another bird's genetic code would have its dormant genes which give it claws, teeth and a long bony tail turned on, making the bird look like a dinosaur when it hatches. Man. Imagining actually having a pet dinosaur in the future. Stygimaloch and Racorex. These two supposed Pachycephalosaurs lived in the Hell Creek Formation in America. However, just like how Nanotyrannus is likely a juvenile T-Rex, both these two dinosaurs are probably just growth stages for the larger contemporary Pachycephalosaurus. Precambrian. Making 88% of Earth's geologic timescale. This super EON takes place before the Paleozoic, starting 4.6 billion years ago, right after the Earth formed. A billion years after do we see the first life forms, such as cyanobacteria, pop up in the fossil record. Some huge ice ages also occurred during the Precambrian, Jurassic Park Raptor. This is one article everyone would know. Not only is it featherless, but it's also twice the size of an actual Velociraptor. Since then popular media has gone on to portray Velociraptor like this. It's not even based on Velociraptor, but a bigger related dinosaur called Deinonychus. Even though these and inaccuracies are notable, these raptors are actually in gen zone genetically modified creatures. This also explains why some extinct dinosaurs in Jurassic World Dominion's prologue are feathered, yet in gens ones don't since they are genetically modified. Time for layer 3. David Peters. This guy is a paleotist infamous for his outlandish views of prehistoric animals, like pterosaurs. Due to this he has gained lots of criticism. He was once an illustrator for natural history books. The craziness all started in 2003 at a meeting when he claimed that the insectivorous pterosaur Jehalopterus, you won't believe it, sucked dinosaurs blood. Peters started a blog in 2011 called the Pterosaur Heresies. He also thinks that Cheroviptorix, Carsosaurus, Longisquima and Langobardosaurus were close relatives of pterosaurs. None of these reptiles are actually related. In 2007 he named his new group, Fenestrosauria. Peters doesn't usually examine fossils like most paleontologists, but instead photoshops images of them. 
With these he can see clues no one else can within the fossils, and this has led to these bizarre skeletal reconstructions. Dinosaur DNA. Something everybody has been waiting for. This year in the journal called Communications Biology, researchers compared fossilized cartilage from the feathered, peacock-sized dinosaur Chordipteryx with cells from modern chickens. They found structures in the fossils that look much like chromatin, or threads of DNA and protein. If these do actually contain DNA, that means one day, similarly to the Builder Dinosaur project I mentioned earlier, we could revive the non-avian dinosaurs and have them roam again. Monster of Erembari. Remember what I was talking about on the Liapleridon subject from earlier? Well, now we'll continue on it. This is the nickname of a currently unknown 10 meter pliosaur discovered in 140 million year old sediments in Mexico during 1985. As I stated before, it was initially considered being a 15 meter juvenile Liapleridon specimen, which would mean that adults could have grown larger. This is one of the inspirations behind the BBC's abomination. Soon it was revised as a 10 meter adult of an unknown genus of Pliosaur, and Liapleridon itself was left as a 7 meter animal. Raptorex. This is similar to the Nanotyrannus riddle from before, but even more problematic. According to paleontologist Peter Larson, the holotype was purchased from a Mongolian fossil dealer by an American businessman in Tokyo, Japan and taken to Arizona, where it was again put up for sale. There the fossil was sold to Dr. Henry Kriegstein, who told paleontologist Paul Sereno about it. The new dino was named Raptor X Kriegstein in 2009. Because it was found by a dealer and not by a professional, Raptor X is much of a mystery to paleontologists. At first it was thought to be from the 130 million year old Yixin formation in China. This would make Raptor X the first Tyrannosaurid, or derived Tyrannosaur, predating Lithranax by almost 50 million years. However, that all changed in 2010 when Peter Larson concluded that it was actually a juvenile Tarbosaurus, in which comes from the 70 million year old Nemegd formation in Mongolia. Still, there's a lot more to be done with Raptor X. Nominadubia. These are words describing fossils with no unique diagnostic features, making these fossilized species doubtful. If a species is an omendubium, it may be lumped into a valid genus. For example, the dubious truton is probably Stenonychosaurus, which is valid. Dacataraptor is a chimera. Dacataraptor was the second largest raptor, or dromaeosaurid, reaching a length of 5.5 meters. It lived in the Hell Creek Formation alongside Tyrannosaurus, Triceratops and other dinosaurs of the region. However, a recent study seemed to show that the Ferculi of Dacataraptor may actually belong to the shell of a turtle called Axestamese. If this was true, Dacataraptor would have no longer have been a valid genus, and merely a chimera between a theropod dinosaur and a turtle. However, this is dubious at best as there may be new papers confirming that Dacataraptor was indeed a valid genus. Plus, the wishbones could easily be removed from the type fossil definition, maintaining the validity of the genus. Additionally, it has been proposed the leg bones attributed to the holotype might even belong to Noviraptorus or instead, likely in zoo, which raise the question about the chimeric nature of the holotype. There is material that is most probably still worth being attributed to a large Dromaeosaur in the Dacataraptor holotype, but given the dubiousness of the validity of various aspects of the holotype, Dacataraptor itself risks to be a valid and dubious genus in its entirety. 1800s Megalosaurus Megalosaurus was the first non-avian dinosaur to ever be described. But people at that time did not know much about it back then, and reconstructed it as this. This is far different from the Paleoid we see today. In fact, here it's shown as a quadruped, compared to the new Megalosaurus. This really shows us a piece of history of our knowledge of dinosaurs. Omnivorous Ceratopsians. Everyone knows that Ceratopsians were herbivores, but there have been some theories regarding omnivory in the horned faces. After all, some primarily herbivorous animals today sometimes eat carrion at times when vegetation is scarce, such as hippos. If ceratopsians have sharp hooked beaks and and rows of slicing teeth, 
that could possibly mean they might have sometimes scavenged as well. It would be quite a surprise to see a herbivorous triceratops scavenging the remains of a T-Rex carcass. Marsupial Pterodactylus Far back before Megalosaurus was described, the famous pterosaur pterodactylus was thought to be a flying marsupial. Soon it was discovered to be a reptile as we see it today. Now, as we dive deeper to layer 4, the mysteries will become stranger. Campanian Spinosaurus We all know that Spinosaurus lived 95 million years ago, but there has been potential material found in sediments dating to roughly 70 million years ago. This date has even been featured on Fossil Works article for the dinosaur. Not much else to say here. Trunksauropods. This outlandish hypothesis was inspired by the original location of sauropod nostrils, which was thought to be on the forehead. Many trunked animal skulls also have nostrils on their foreheads, which is where the trunk would connect to. If sauropods had nostrils on their foreheads, they would have had trunks too. Right? Well, the nostrils of sauropods are now thought to be placed on their snouts, so the trunk hypothesis is unlikely nowadays. Archaeoraptor. This is the informal generic name for a fossil chimera from China in an article published in National Geographic magazine in 1999. The magazine claimed that the fossil was a missing link between birds and terrestrial theropod dinosaurs. Even prior to this publication there had been severe doubts about the fossil's authenticity. There have been studies showing that different parts of the fossil belonged to different animals. The head and upper body belonged to a primitive bird called Yanornis. And the tail belonged to the four-winged Dromaeosaur called Microraptor. The owner of the legs and feet is still unknown. Eichner fossils. I'm not sure if this should be placed on this layer. Anyways, these are fossil records of biological activity but not the remains of the plant or animal itself. These also include fossilized footprints, and are also called trace fossils. Proratodactylus. This is an ichnogenus known from footprints found in Poland and France. These footprints were probably made by an animal that would have been an early quadrupedal forerunner of dinosaurs. The fossil dates back to the early Triassic, a few million years after the Great Dying, making it one of the earliest of the terrible lizards. Giant Somerset Chastasaurid. You probably know that the largest known marine reptile is a 21-meter ichthyosaur called Chastasaurus sicanensis, or Shonosaurus sicanensis if you prefer. But a jawbone was found in Somerset, England that might belong to an even bigger reptile. Around 205 million years old, the jaw was found in 2016, and later discovered to belong to a giant Chastasaurid ichthyosaur in 2018. The owner of the jawbone probably dwarfed S. sicanensis at a length of 26 meters. Some even say that this huge reptile could dethrone the blue whale, although this is still a mystery. Cryptids. Over the years, strange creatures thought to resemble extinct animals have been reported. Among the most famous is the Loch Ness Monster and Mokkelmbemb. However, due to their inaccurate shape, their existence is controversial. Dinosauroid. This is a hypothesis made by paleontologist Dale Russell in 1982, which states that the Trodontid Stenonychosaurus could give rise to an intelligent descendant similar to humans if it survived the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction. However, the dinosauroid hypothesis was criticized by other paleontologists due to how off the body plan is compared to other theropods. Taurosaurus is Triceratops. Both of these famous ceratopsians coexisted in the Hell Creek formation, but there has been a debated hypothesis suggesting that these were both the same animals, with Taurosaurus being an elderly Triceratops. It suggests that over time, Triceratops would grow longer frills with holes, now we dive even deeper, to layer 5. Chimeric specimens. Nope, not that chimera. In paleontology, a chimera is a fossil that was reconstructed with elements coming from more than a single species of animal. I've literally mentioned some of these before on this iceberg, like Archaeoraptor and possibly Dacoteraptor. Denny the Neanderthal Denisovan hybrid. 
more scientifically Denisovan than 11, this is a fossil of a girl dated to 90,000 years old, and at least 13 years old when she died. She is thought to be an archaic human hybrid of Neanderthal and Denisovan. She was found in Siberia during 2012 and represents the first time an ancient individual was discovered whose parents belonged to two distinct species of humans. Fire-breathing Parasaurolophus. This is a myth theorized by young earth creationist Wayne Gish in his books Dinosaurs by Design and Dinosaurs, Those Terrible Lizards, proposing that the Hadrus or Parasaurolophus would have breathed fire to deter predators. Despite having no evidence supporting it and being repeatedly debunked, many people still share the theory and believe it to have been plausible. We should all know that Hadris or Crests were for amplifying their calls, and not for imitating dragons. Triceratops Evolution In 2014, John Scanella of Montana State University and his team examined more than 50 skulls of the two known Triceratops species, T. horridus, and T. Prorsus, and, based on morphological differences and placement in the strata, determined that the former species evolved into the latter through anagenesis. This probably explains why T. horridus went extinct before T. Prorsus showed up in the fossil record, it would have simply just gave way to a new species of Triceratops. Hell Creek Microraptorian. Apparently, there has been material found in the Hell Creek formation which may belong to a dinosaur related to the Asian Microraptor. If it indeed is, then this would be the youngest and last Microraptorian to have existed, blowing the 76 million year old Hesperonychus out of the water. However, the material could probably just be from Richardo Stesia. Alama Tyrannus. This is the informal name of a currently undescribed Tyrannosaurid from the Ojo Alamo formation in New Mexico. Its remains date to around 70 million years ago, just a few million years before Tyrannosaurus evolved. It might have actually been Tyrannosaurus itself, but, who knows. Anyways, we have finally finished layer 5. Now it's time to reach the very bottom. Paleocene Dinosaurs We all know that birds are the only dinosaurs to survive the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction. However, there have been non-avian dinosaur remains found above the Cretaceous Paleogene boundary. In 2000, a right femur of a hadrosaur was found in Paleocene rocks in New Mexico, dated to 64 and a half million years old. If the bone was not redeposited by weathering action, it would provide evidence that some dinosaur populations may have survived at least half a million years into the Cenozoic. There have also been remains found in the Hell Creek formation just one and a half meters above the boundary. However, these supposed Paleocene dinosaurs are considered by many researchers to be reworked, that is, washed out of their original locations and then reburied in younger sediments. The age estimates have also been considered unreliable. Smuggled Tarbosaurus. In 2012, Florida businessman Eric Procopi brought a Tarbosaurus skeleton from Mongolia to the UK, and then into the US. He declared that the skeleton originated from British sediments, but this is wrong since Tarbosaurus is from Mongolian and Chinese sediments. It was then sold for auction at New York for over a million dollars. However, the Mongolian government prevented the sale. This is because the Mongolian law states that all dinosaur fossils are culturally significant and can't be removed from Mongolia without the government's permission. Later that same year, Prokopi was arrested, and the Tarbosaurus was sent back to Mongolia in 2013. Fake Chinese Fossils Apparently, there are fake fossil specimens made from China that are sold on eBay. They aren't fossils because of how they're made. So watch out next time you buy a fossil. I don't have much else to explain. Fossils on other planets. Okay I'm not even a space guy, but anyways, there have been what were thought to be micro fossils found on Mars, suggesting that Mars was once habitable. This year though, there was a study which disagreed with the Mars fossils and suggested that these were just coincidental in looks. Extinct animal sightings. Over the years, there have been rumors saying that extinct animals were sighted in modern times. You probably have seen many videos on YouTube that show extinct animals caught on camera. However, these rumors and videos are probably just from mistaken identity with modern animals and editing. 
non-avian dinosaurs in cave paintings. The portrayal of archaic humans coexisting with non-avian dinosaurs is a huge inaccuracy that is popular in many media. We already know that humans never coexisted with them in real life. But what if they did? Around the world, there are some cave paintings with what look like dinosaurs drawn onto them. However, this is likely also a coincidence. And finally, Triassic Kraken. This is a giant ancient cephalopod hypothesized by paleontologist Mark McMenamin that would have lived in the Triassic of Nevada. A beak and some huge sucker marks were found near a Shonosaurus fossil. The cephalopod itself was thought to be a huge 30 meters long, much bigger than a colossal squid. But this animal is a mystery. Paleontology student Tyler Greenfield states that it's more like a cryptid than a real animal and McMenamin's theory is now considered irrelevant and highly implausible. But still, imagine monsters lurking in the depths as big as this. Holy. That iceberg was so huge. Anyways, see you next time.